Elon Musk's SpaceX is building a giant rocket factory on the coast of Texas. This is the first time that orbital rockets have ever been mass manufactured on a production line, and SpaceX is essentially following the blueprint laid out by Tesla with their electric vehicle gigafactories. The result will be a massive fleet of Starship vehicles that will take humanity to the moon, Mars, and beyond. This is the Star Factory. We are looking at the end of an era for SpaceX. After four years of development and testing and exploding, the Starship rocket is well on its way to becoming a fully operational, super heavy launch vehicle. And along with that newfound maturity for Starship comes a need to evolve the processes and infrastructure that are built around manufacturing and deploying those rockets. When SpaceX first arrived in Boca Chica Village a decade ago, there was really nothing to be found there aside from a lot of sand and water, some grass, and a quarter-mile strip of mid-century bungalow houses seemingly forgotten by the world. Leftovers from a failed attempt to build a town that was abandoned in the 1960s and never really thought of again until Elon Musk moved in. If you go on Google Street View and turn the date back to 2011, you can literally watch the world's largest rocket launch tower vanish into flat scrubland. The point being that SpaceX did not have a lot to work with when they first arrived at the location that would become Starbase. And that really shows in their early production methods for the initial Starship prototypes. They were just kind of hacked together out in the middle of the desert, and it showed they looked like crap. But that's the way that SpaceX has always operated. They try, they fail, they do it again better the next time. So as progress moves on, they start to put up some tents, or sprung structures as engineers like to call them, which quickly become bigger tents. And they build some vertical shelters so that they can stack rockets without the wind knocking them over. The low bay, the mid bay, and eventually the high bay. And the better the production site gets, the better the rockets get. Going from something that looks like a flying water tank, to something that looks like a flying grain silo, to something that looked like an actual rocket, and actually flew up into the clouds, before plummeting back down to the earth and exploding in a giant fireball on impact. The first of many explosions that would define the middle era of Starbase from 2020 to 2021. But like we said, a lot has changed over the past year. Now the starships explode in mid-air instead of on the ground. Progress. Seriously though, for as much change as we've seen with the rocket designs, there has been just as much, if not more, of an evolution to the production site, the place where the real magic happens. What do you know about Astronus Space? Probably not much, but this company has sold over $1 billion in satellite services in just two years. The goal at Astronus is to connect the world by providing affordable internet to rural and remote areas using small, powerful satellites from geostationary orbit. And some of the world's top investors have already put more than $400 million into Astronus Space as investment into the future of communication. Now how'd you like to join them? Here's the deal. Space exploration startups like Astronus are not publicly traded companies. They do still have investors though, and access to these companies is only given to wealthy insiders like venture capitalists and private equity firms. But not anymore. Linktu is a platform that removes barriers to investing in the future of space exploration, giving you the opportunity to get in early on companies like Axiom Space, Astronus, and Quantum Space. Linktu is already providing over 600,000 everyday investors access to private investing, and because you are viewers of this channel, you get a $500 discount on your first investment using the discount code on the screen. Take advantage of this limited time promotion by clicking the link in the description below. In late January 2024, we watched the last of the three main production tents at Starbase get taken down. This is the true ending of the era that we started talking about, and just as quickly as the tents have gone down, the Star Factory has arrived. SpaceX is moving at incredible speeds to build out a permanent structure on the site that will become a mass manufacturing hub 
for the Starship. This is a critical piece in the SpaceX master plan for colonizing the planet Mars. They need starships, a lot of starships. In 2022, SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell revealed that she wants to see one new starship upper stage built every single day. And in 2023, she envisioned SpaceX launching dozens of starships per day, if not hundreds of launches per day. So in order to live up to such unprecedented expectations, the crews at Starbase need to figure out how to mass manufacture orbital rockets, something that has literally never been done before. The closest I can think of is in the mid-1970s, the Soviet Union was building around 60 of their Soyuz rockets every year, give or take. Currently, NASA is struggling just to build one SLS rocket per year, and it somehow costs them around $4 billion every time that they do. This is clearly not an easy task, so how the hell is SpaceX going to do it all from one factory in a remote Texas desert? To get an idea of what is going to happen inside a Starship factory, we can look at the construction process that SpaceX has been using so far. SpaceX has constructed a series of vertical assembly buildings over the years at Starbase, beginning with the low bay, the mid bay, and the high bay, then recently expanding into the mega bay. To date, the low bay and the mid bay have already been demolished to make way for the Star Factory construction, while a second mega bay just finished construction, so the mega bay is the future of Starship construction. There will be one building dedicated to orbital ship stages, and the second building dedicated to super heavy boosters. These structures are used to assemble the rocket stages by stacking prefabricated ring sections and welding them together. Elon Musk has said the reason that SpaceX has kept making these buildings wider over time is to provide more working stations within each bay. This way, more ships and boosters can be assembled simultaneously. We can see this in an epic wide-angle photo posted by SpaceX that shows three full-sized boosters sitting on the engine installation stands, while two partially assembled boosters are being stored off on the sides and waiting their turn. So there is enough room in each mega bay to hold a total of five rockets, with up to three being worked on simultaneously. You can think of these tall buildings kind of like general assembly areas while the more intricate manufacturing happens in the lower areas. In the beginning phase of Starbase, SpaceX technicians worked out of three long tents acting as their main production lines. But all of these tents have just been replaced as the permanent factory structure continues to expand. Making rockets in tents may seem like a bit of a joke, but this is pretty similar to how Tesla learned to build their Model 3 and Model Y. Instead of trying to conform to the existing factory space they had, Tesla set up giant tents in the parking lot and started figuring it out from scratch. This is how they were able to integrate brand new manufacturing techniques like their Gigapress casting machine. These are the largest die casting machines in the world, they are the size of a house, and way too gigantic to just drop into an existing factory floor, so Tesla set their first Gigapress up under a tent at Fremont and started using it to build cars. Once they knew that it worked for their purpose, then they could design their new gigafactories to be built around the gigapress machines. The manufacturing process starts when SpaceX receives their raw materials. They get giant rolls of 304L stainless steel that are then cut to length, formed into rings, and welded. These become the straight sides of the ship and booster. For the curved bits like the nose cone and the interior domes that form the tops and bottoms of fuel tanks, SpaceX receives panels of stamped and stretch formed stainless steel that they weld together. The three original tents represented three strings of Starship components being manufactured in parallel, basically divided between producing the top, middle, and bottom sections of the Starship all at the same time. One tent is filled with Raptor engines, and is dedicated to the lower thrust section of the ship and booster. The middle tent is home to the ring sections and domes that make up the body and fuel tanks of the Starship. Each section is between three and five rings of steel welded together. Each section is then prepared for its specific role with a range of cutouts, plumbing, and reinforcements. Finished sections for the upper stage ship are also fitted with thermal insulation and heat shield tiles here in the tent. 
The third tent is then dedicated to producing nose cones. These are made from long pieces of stretch-formed stainless steel that are welded together along vertical lines. The nose section is also fitted with its heat shield before rolling out. So this process allows SpaceX to manufacture the key segments of the ship and booster simultaneously on the ground, and then they're all brought together at the mega bay for final assembly. The segments are stacked, welded, and then given finishing touches like engines, wings, grid fins, and actuators. As far as we can tell, SpaceX is continuing the same general manufacturing process inside the new Star Factory building. But that is only an assumption, because the solid walls of the factory bring a level of security that we're not really used to seeing around Starbase. It was always relatively easy for camera people on the ground to peek inside the tents and watch ring stacking out in the open. But unfortunately, that era has come to an end. So what we're looking at right now for the completed sections of Star Factory building is a kind of L-shape, but it's quickly becoming more of a U-shape as a new factory segment goes up right along the edge of the highway. The Star Factory footprint is looking to be around 800 feet in length and width that's combined with a 60-foot tall roofline, so that's obviously going to make the manufacturing process much easier by having one continuous production floor instead of three separate tents, giving SpaceX somewhere between two and three times more covered floor space. It also gives them significantly more vertical space because the tents are pyramid-shaped, they only reach their full height down the middle, and they're pretty low towards the edges. In theory, that means that SpaceX could make each segment a little taller, and therefore have fewer sections that need to be stacked in the assembly bay. The final Star Factory layout will end up being more or less square in shape. That works out to probably around five times more total production space than what the company had available when they first started building Starships. With the three primary tents cleared out, we are seeing the final foundation going in at a rapid pace. So this is how SpaceX eventually gets to a point where they are producing one Starship every day, by having such a massive production space that they can be working on several new rockets all at the same time, building out these prefabricated segments, then the final assembly process is as easy as stacking them up and installing some finishing touches before shipping them down the road to the launch site. And this massive production volume is going to be what SpaceX will need for Starship to live up to Elon's grand vision. Not only will Starship replace all of the existing SpaceX fleet, the Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Dragon capsule, in addition to becoming the primary muscle of NASA's Artemis moon landing program, but Starship is also the backbone of Elon's mission to establish a self-sustaining city on the planet Mars. The Star Factory is critical to making all of that become a reality.